welcome to the FCS quarterfinals on ABC. Here in the booming metropolis of Vermilion, South Dakota. A rematch, two teams that squared off just 70 days ago, the three seed Coyotes against the Bison from North Dakota State. As we welcome you to the quarterfinals. Exciting game last night concluding as Montana survived against Furman in OT. And the winner of this game set to face off with the Grizz next week. South Dakota State currently leading Villanova, the number one seed over on ESPN. Well, how did we get here? Let's go back a week in time. We start first with the Coyotes. Mike Heath's Grace, the former high school running back, a scoop, a score. That was the difference against Sacramento State. 34-24 was the final. Meanwhile, Heartbreak Hotel for Montana State. The Bison found a way, Hunter Brocious, Pontius rather, with the block PAT. That was the difference at six feet, eight inches tall. In OT, 35. 34 was the final score with Roddy Jones. I'm Roy Philpott. Lauren Sisler joins us on the sideline in just one minute. And boy, high flying football action right now and survive in advance for both teams right now. Yeah, it's been tremendous. We've got a great one if it's anything like the two games that we've seen before us. But you've got a South Dakota team that's hosting a quarterfinal for the first time in its history, trying to take down one of the premier brands in the entire country in college football. North Dakota State would be the second time this year they would take down the Bison, a tough task. Yeah, you talk about a dynastic run. That's exactly what the Bison have been through. You look at their FCS playoff record, 46 and four. Players like Carson Wentz, Trey Lance leading the charge. 14th straight quarterfinal appearance here this afternoon in the Dakota Dome. Nine national championships dating back to 2010. And Matt Entz leading that current charge for the Bison. How do they do it, Roddy Jones? Well, it may look a little different stylistically, but they do it the way they've always done it, running the football. And it starts with Tameric Williams, their leading rusher there at running back. He has a three-headed monster out of the backfield. Marika Penu as well, their fourth leading rusher. You can throw TK Marshall in there as well. We'll see them all. But the quarterbacks do a lot of damage too. Cam Miller, their number two rusher, and Cole Payton. We'll see both of them. 22 touchdowns on the ground from the quarterback position alone for North Dakota State this year. Some NFL potential perhaps for Peyton. More on that as we go through. The Bison in the top three nationally in points per game this season. For more on that NDSU offense, Lauren Sisler, what do you have? Hey, guys, you know, NDSU building that dynasty. They are the dynasty of college football. This year, though, looking quite a bit different. Three losses on their record, and this team not taking it lightly. They come into this matchup with a chip on their shoulder. Quarterback Cam Miller told me that this one means more. This one is special for him. He said they've got to come in here with a sense of belief. they got to play fast. they got to play physical. they got to play their brand of football, and they got to cut it loose. Guys? Lauren, thank you very much. Meanwhile, for USD, the Coyotes, they're built on that defense in the play action game offensively, Roddy. They are so efficient on both sides. Yeah, from the quarterback position, Aiden Bowman has been absolutely fantastic this season at the quarterback. And then on the other side, Brock Mogensen, the Missouri Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year, 395 career tackles. He had 13 the first time these two teams met. You're going to see him all over the field it's been a defense that has been sort of bend don't break oh, opponents are only scoring 51 percent of the time scoring touchdowns 51 percent of the time they get in the red zone so on offense it's bauman and on defense it's mogensen missouri valley defensive player of the year has been sensational the old man on this defense going all the way back to 2018 and he has improved each and every year North Dakota State won the coin toss. Roddy, they elected to receive Zeke Mata. Kick things away. Rajah Nelson and Eli Green back deep to receive. Sellout crowd expected today. And we are underway inside the Dakota Dome where it is nice and toasty. Great to be indoors. A fair catch called for by Green. We've talked a lot about Cam Miller leads the FCS in completion percentage this season. And one of the highest rated quarterbacks in the entire country, if you look at pro football focus, he can do it on the ground and through the air. He's coming off his toughest passing game of the season. Last week, only 66 yards in the game against Montana State. But you're going to see him do it in a myriad of different ways. He's very accurate in the passing game, but his legs may be the biggest weapon that he has. 
Already loud in play action on first down. Miller's going to be bothered. And sacked all the way back at the 10. Jonathan Jonas got there. It's a great job of coverage downfield. And on the first play of the game, they're able to sack Cam Miller. He was sacked a season high four times last week. But you can see the coverage on the little flat route before Jonas is able to get in the backfield and take him down. Extra offensive lineman checks in for the Bison. Power set after a loss of 14 on the first play from scrimmage. And Williams checked that Marshall straight ahead. Nothing doing a five yard gain on second and 24. This is exactly what happened to North Dakota State last week. They were poor on first and second downs in particular and had a ton of third and 10 plus. And this is where this sold out crowd can start to get into it. Coyotes showing pressure on third and long. Time for Miller. Heaves one deep and has a man. Caught! Henderson. And a first big play for the Bison all the way down in USD territory. And a gain of 37 yards. It's great protection up front to allow Cam Miller the time to deliver the ball down the field. And then Braylon Henderson kind of ends up one-on-one -on -one against the corner. It's a really nice throw by Cam Miller down the field over the head of the safety. Just one on one in the slot against the safety and boom a big play on third down and Roddy important to point out Coyotes without the services of Shahid Barrows today Caleb McKenzie forced into the starting lineup reserve cornerback he's played a ton but I don't know that he's quite as good in coverage as Barrows it's the game by Marshall he'll pick up a couple in the tackle by Mogens really settled this crowd down Matt Ince talked to us over and over and over about getting off to a fast start. Big reason why North Dakota State opted to receive the first kickoff, and that big completion now gets you in a point where you've got a drive going and some momentum early in this game. It's Merrick Williams back on the field. Second and seven. And a false start calls the Bison five. False start, number 82, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Joe Stuffel that time, the guilty party. This is an all-star crew out of the Southland Conference, led by Gary Leeper. We see the tight ends at the top of your screen just lean back and sort of flinch a little bit. Second and 12. Time for Miller on the move. Pass is caught. Eli Green in a first down. Now the pressure came from Gaze, and Miller bought enough time to keep this drive going. Just a really good job of a sail route by Green with a clear out on the outside. The receiver furthest out runs a go, and it clears out Green in that intermediate area on the sideline. Really nice job of hanging in the pocket under a little bit of pressure by Cam Miller. And this pass game for North Dakota State was come to play early. Gain of 37 to Henderson moments ago. 31 that time to Eli Green. Marshall and Williams in the backfield. And Penu around the left side. Scampers ahead towards the 10 and stop there. Something that'd be really fun to do during this game is to sit at home and chart the number of different personnel groupings North Dakota State uses. We've already seen extra tackles in the game. We've seen three wide receivers. That time you got three running backs in the backfield in a diamond formation with the quarterback and a handoff to Barika Penner. Penner has scored four times this season. Second down and two. Bison on the move. First possession of this quarterfinal matchup in Vermillion. It's Marshall with Miller. Miller's going to keep it. And the quarterback run 
needed two. Should be enough for the first down, and it is. It'll be first and goal from around the seven. This North Dakota State team, whether it was head coach Matt Entz or offensive coordinator Tyler Roll, preached to us physicality. How many times did they say that they were not pleased with their physicality in the game last week against Montana State on offense and on defense? And this is a team that prides itself on being great up front. Last nine possessions in the red zone. They've scored touchdowns on seven of those occasions. Rajan Nelson now the running back on first and goal. And he'll get it to the edge, tripped up there. Then it's shorter. Two in red and white with a tackle. You're going to see Dennis Shorter all over the field. He's one of the best tackling safeties in the entire country. Quickly triggers downhill and is able to make the tackle. Bison tried to avoid that slow start that they suffered against this same team 70 days ago. Ended up losing 24 to 19 in Fargo. Marshall, the running back. Miller going to keep it. And that's Peyton who just checked in. Shoved out of bounds. Virtually no gain on the play. And Roddy, third down and goal. So we've seen Cole Payton. We've seen Cam Miller. We've seen a multitude of different backs. Yeah, and Cole Payton gets these carries pretty often. Not necessarily just in the red zone, but Mokinson and that crew do a nice job of stringing it out. And now you've got a third down. Watch where six foot seven, number zero, Zach Mathis lines up. He's going to line up to the top of the screen, one on one. Now they motion another receiver. Over. Nelson in the slot. Cam Miller time now races for the goal line. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Bison. And a statement drive for NDSU right out of the gate. They're going to look to see if that left elbow goes down before he gets in the end zone. And the angles that we saw, I think he's in. It was close, but what a drive by North Dakota State to start it off. Two long pass completions of 31 and 37 yards to Braylon Henderson and Eli Green setting up Cam Miller on third and goal. For his 13th rushing score of the season. 75 yards in just under six and a half minutes, Roddy. And it got started on a third and long on the third play of the game. Braylon Henderson catches a long pass to convert. And then another third down conversion later on. It's Cam Miller using his legs, which he does so often and so well, to get the Bison on the board. Look your teammates in the eye, just like I talk to you about every week. Every play. Every play today, we understand, is the one that makes a difference. Kicking game, offense, defense, every play. Play it with great confidence, with great effort, great passion. Mm -hmm. Hey, play it together. Play it together, just like we've done all year. Play it together. No excuses. Win! Let's go, baby! Go, baby. Let's go, baby. Bob Nielsen, head coach for the Coyotes, year number eight. Leading one of the more impressive turnarounds we've seen. And a kickoff, a fair catch called for Keandre Jones. Coyotes will get it at the 25. Tell me about Aiden Bauman, what you like. Well, he's a big quarterback with a really good, it throws a really good ball down the field. He's moves well in the pocket, doesn't necessarily scramble to run, but incredible composure as he stands in the pocket, a picturesque six foot five. He's the son of a former NFL quarterback, Todd Bauman, who played for the NFL, for the for the Minnesota Vikings. Transfer from Iowa State shows a lot of composure running this offense. Bison faithful making some noise after password gate earlier this week and a handoff to Pierre straight ahead stopped at the line. 
Well, the big controversy, Roddy, was North Dakota State finding a way to infiltrate the ticket system for South Dakota, and the fans gobbling up tickets in huge numbers because they were able to guess the password to be able to get those tickets for the boosters and alums, if you will. And fortunately for Bison fans, those tickets were canceled and refunds were issued after the password of playoffs was figured out. Still a good contention on hand from Fargo. And the handoff, Tice, positive yards, gonna make it third and medium, gain of four, the tackle by John. Sam Young coming from the secondary to make that tackle. It sets up a third and medium. And if you're South Dakota, this is a, it's early in the game. It's a big third down. North Dakota State was able to convert on theirs to get on the board. They wanted to get off to that fast start. They want to go three and out here. Third down and four. Ties the running back. Time for Balbeck. Surveys and heaves. Has a man. Caught in stride. Javion Phelps. Big passing plays for both sides here in our first quarter. And a gain of 39 yards for the Coyotes. It's a really nice job by Aiden Bauman of not assuming what the coverage was going to be. He wanted to go to the flat, but it ends up being cover two. J Sam Young isn't able to get over the top on the boundary, and they're able to get a completion. You're going to see the corner sit on that flat route like he's supposed to do in cover two. That whole shot's there, and Aiden Bauman hits it. Pistol look, ties the running back, play action. Bauman nearly gobbled up, dumps it off. That'll be a first down and then some. Tice corralled it. Stumbles down near the 15, a gain of 16 yards. Incredible maneuvering in the pocket by Aiden Bauman. And then dumps it off to Travis Tice, who is the heart and soul of this defense, but the big quarterback showing some nifty footwork in the pocket. And then Tice down the field showing great balance. New offensive play caller this year for South Dakota, Josh Davis. Bob Nielsen able to get him from South Dakota State. A significant addition to this team in 2023. Screen pass comes in low to Carter Bell, leading receiver. It'll be second and 10. Probably better for South Dakota that it ended up incomplete. They lost a couple yards with Bell having to go down and catch that one, but it's exactly the start that South or the response that South Dakota would have wanted. Now they want to punch the ball into the end zone, but the big passing play down the field has to make Bob Nielsen, the head coach, pretty pleased. Always wears the tie. He started wearing the tie when he was 29 and was first named as a head coach. Felt like he needed to look more official to be able to talk to officials at that time. A couple of national championships at Minnesota Duluth. Resume speaks for itself. Bauman, end zone, Bell. Try the one-handed grab, and he comes up empty. You now the coverage with Sam Young in the area, and Bell would have been on SportsCenter's top 10 tomorrow if he was able to haul that one in. Almost a beautiful catch. You want to get the, your fingertips around the tip of that ball, not quite able to get there. But South Dakota's found something, getting those receivers on the safeties of North Dakota State. Question is, what do you go to in a third down scenario, third and 10? Going to have to protect, though. Two excellent pass rushers on the edge for North Dakota State. Play clock winding down. Bauman has it. Buys some time. Sidearm delivery near that front pylon. And incomplete. It'll be fourth down and a field goal attempt likely coming for the Coyotes. Pass just a little late and a little outside for Bauman. It's a good response by North Dakota State's defense to force this field goal attempt, especially with the start they got off to offensively. Will Leyland, field goal kicker. And it's been perfect this season. Well within his range, 32-yard effort. Friendly confines of the Dakota Dome. Actually different than what's just outside of us. South Dakota on the board at 7-3. After Will Leyland remains perfect on this season. Now pressure mounting for both sides. Good starts for both offenses. 7-3 here in our first quarter.
Well, rematch of two teams that squared off just 70 days ago up in the Fargo Dome, and it was South Dakota that was able to get off to such an impressive start. A 21-3 advantage at halftime. Bison came back, and they made it a game. 24-19 was the final, just the second win in Fargo for the Coyotes since 2015. And for head coach Matt Entz, getting off to a faster start, imperative today. His fifth season as the head man in Fargo. Five years previously as the defensive play caller. Roddy, I would say, this kind of start was exactly what they were looking for. Yeah, and, and finishing with a touchdown is, is going to be huge today. They were able to move the ball in that first matchup against South Dakota, but they weren't able to put the ball in the end zone consistently. Seven to three from inside the one, Eli Green. Full head of steam. And brought down hard as he's chopped at the 24. 527 to go in a fast moving first quarter. North Dakota State, four point advantage. survive in advance and coach Jens admitted that his football team got a bit complacent earlier this season he said that the veterans and leaders really stepped up to make some correction get guys bought in and that belief is now there there is so much confidence and belief in this football team and it really showed up last week against Montana State they went out played from behind and not once doubted themselves they are no doubt carrying the juice in today's day game I can see it on the sidelines and yeah, Lauren thank you very much Matt Entz off to a fast start Trying to advance to another national championship game. Bison were there last year, lost to South Dakota State. Jack Rabbits currently on top of Villanova. Other part of the bracket. Game nearly at its conclusion in Brookings. Bison get it back. Time for Miller and a dangerous toss incomplete. Looking for his tight end in the flats. Stuffle and he was blanketed by Caleb McKenzie. I, I wouldn't be surprised Roy, if they come back to that play at some point because Raja Nelson just ran by the South Dakota secondary. Fortunate for the Coyotes that, that Cam Miller was locked on going to the out, but I mean, Raja Nelson was wide open streaking down the field. Game has gone final at Brookings 23 to 12. South Dakota State punching its ticket once again to the semifinals next week. Got you Albany and Idaho later tonight. The last quarterfinal. Straight ahead goes Williams. Weave his way to the 28, and that's it, a four-yard game. Really nice push by the North Dakota State offensive line to make this a third and more manageable. They were two for two on third downs in that first drive. This down so crucial for both teams, especially with the early success the Bison have found. It's amazing. USD won the first game between these two teams. Ran less than 40 plays in the process. Low possession game likely on hand today. Empty set. Watch the quarterback run with Cam Miller. Bison needs six. Miller passes caught green. Two yards pass. First down yardage. That'll keep the drive alive. Miles Hart in coverage. Brought him down. Feels like he's locked in today. He knew exactly where he was going with the football and the delivery to Eli Green right between the one and the three. A little bit of space in between the two defenders. Ball's on time and on target. First down. Right, it feels like North Dakota State seeing the Bison in person for the first time this season today. More explosive at wide receiver than what we've seen in the recent past. And that was an emphasis for offensive coordinator Tyler Roll. At least with what he told us this week, and the Bison going to call a timeout. So that updated bracket, the Jackrabbits now in the semis, handling their business. Close game, late in the fourth quarter against the eight seed Villanova. Game coming up next Friday night, seven o'clock on ESPN two. That's seven Eastern as the Jackrabbits await the winner of Idaho and UAlbany. Montana, the two seed, waits the winner between North Dakota State and South Dakota here today. Well, the NCAA FCS championship coverage continues next week. It was semifinal coverage, of course, on ESPN Networks.
For more information, visit NCAA.com. The home for all 90 NCAA championships. Did you watch the game last night? The Grizz handling their business, and I mean it was late against Furman. Powden's had a chance on the road. They sure did. I mean, going to Missoula in that kind of weather and competing, it was phenomenal, phenomenal game. Overtime win for the Grizz. It's a number two seeded team to the semis. Movement. Kubas jumped. False start. Number 63, offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Going back to what we were just talking about, Bison already with two plays of 30 yards or longer so far. It does really feel like after last year losing to South Dakota State in Frisco, the way in which they lost, it was determined fairly quickly. We got to be more explosive on the perimeter than what we have been. Yeah, and, and head coach Matt Inns told us that his offensive coordinator, Tyler Roll, who wants to run the football, really put himself in a place of vulnerability, getting more shotgun and more throwing the ball more. I formation, Penu stopped. Gain of two, and that's it. Yeah, we heard that word, uncomfortableness. As Matt Inns said, Tyler Roll, as they examined what they needed to do this year. And we had to kind of step out of our comfort zone to make sure that we're doing everything we can, make sure our offense, Lauren, is in the right spot. That really what they tried to do was simplify it a little more. He wants to see them play fast. That's a word that came up a lot in our meetings. You mentioned it, Roy. And play football, not fake football, right? He wants them to feel like Superman, like superpowers when they line up and dominate that line of scrimmage and execute at a high level. Play action, Miller. They'll step ahead. Fires to Green, who has it. And another big play in the passing game. The pressure was coming from Brendan Webb. Couldn't get home. Advantage Bison. And the protection has been so good, with the exception of that first sack. I and mean, when you get a guy that's kind of running over the top of the hump with a great pocket in front of the quarterback, it's really easy to step up. And while the pass is a little behind Eli Green, he has so much time coming across the field that he's able to make the tackle, and these safeties have not been able to cover Green. You like Green, Braylon Henderson. There's a gain of 20. Another big play through the air. Williams will get a touch over the right side. Gain of four on first down and driven down late by Mogensen and Miles Harden. And they are challenging the secondary with with incredible route combinations but also challenging the box with big personnel that time you got three tight ends in the game two backs and it is downhill smash mouth football and now you're going to get cole payton back in the game six foot three 230 pounds at quarterback almost always a run when he's in the game rajah nelson joins him in the backfield that end said he's a freak Roddy Jones thinks he could be a tight end in the next level. Here come the Jets. Payton to the house. Just because you know it's a run doesn't mean you can stop the run. Watch the left side of this offensive line. Probably a hold there on the edge by Joe Stuffle, but the two pullers come around, both of them find work, and Cole Payton is able to get the ball in the end zone. Roddy, he does not need a lot of real estate to get to that edge and make something magical happen. Quite a weapon to come off of Matt Entz's bench. And to spell Cam Miller, you got that kind of speed. North Dakota State now in front by 11. It's just such a good job up front. You have the little flash fake to a screen on the outside that freezes the linebackers and lets those pullers come around. And then the speed of Cole Payton. We're able to see it on the sideline. Those linebackers freeze. You get the backside linebacker flowing that way, thinking, hey, it could be screened to Raja Nelson. It's not. And this offensive line is really athletic. They do a nice job front side, backside pulls around, finds work. and. What a start for the Bison. 11th rushing touchdown of the season. That one from 43 yards out. There are two quarterbacks, both with rushing touchdowns in our first quarter. 
and over 161 total yards for the Bison already. Trying to exact revenge from what happened 70 days ago in the Fargo Dome. Ozick sends it long. And here's Jones. Looking for a crease and tripped up crossing the 25 and brought down quickly there. Uh, coming up this week on Sunday, NFL Countdown. What's at stake for Dak and the Cowboys? Their showdown against the Eagles and all access with Jason Kelsey and making of a Philly special Christmas album. That should be fun. And then Monday Night Football, of course, got games headed your way to Titans and Dolphins at 8 Eastern. It's on ESPN, then over right here on ABC, Green Bay and New York. Peyton and Eli also on ESPN2 as well, breaking down both games with limited commercial interruptions. Everything also on ESPN+. Plus. Bauman back on the field for South Dakota. Carter Bell on the crosser, driven down quickly after a short gain, and that was Luke Wirtz. It's going to be interesting to see how South Dakota attacks now. Obviously, it's still early in the game, so you're not going to have to press it all, but most of their success came throwing the football on that last drive. And then when they got in the red zone, it was the incomplete passes that really kind of killed the drive. Back-to-back -back plays with an empty set, though, for Bauman to start. Approaching a minute to play in our first quarter. Dominated by the Bison so far. Ties the running back. He'll get the carry. And bottled up Luke Wirtz again. He's been active in his first 14 minutes. And another third and medium. Carter Bell is the go-to, number 14, and they've moved him around Tried to target him down in the red zone a couple of times. He's the guy that Bauman has the most trust in. Number 82, J.J. Galbraith. Scored a big touchdown for them last year. He's to the top of the screen, split out, while Bell is going in motion. Bell the leading receiver. Play clock down to two. Bauman has it, pocket collapses, the pass low to Bell. Three and out force by NDSU and the pressure coming by the Bison that time. Mostart nearly got home. And I think the pressure bothered Bauman. It was kind of at his feet, wasn't really able to step into the throw and the ball just kind of dies on him. You can see, not able to really step into it, just tries to arm it out there. Three and out's gonna give North Dakota State an opportunity to have an emphatic start to this game. The Bison starting to play like how they did in winning all those national championships. Jaden Price back deep to receive this punt. A penalty marker flies. And Price with an empty cut. Big yardage. Price into the open field. There he goes. He will not be caught. Touchdown, Bison. There is a penalty marker down at the 30. And that flag came out right as that play began. And Matt Ent signaling, we're going to decline this in a hurry. I think I would decline it as well. Good call by you. <laughs> 81 yard punt return for a touchdown. Illegal shift. Kicking team. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. A dream start for Matt Ince and a nightmare start for Bob Nielsen on the other side. And Roy, so much of North Dakota State getting off to the good start is because I still think there's an allure around this team when they roll into town and the green and yellow get ahead. You start to feel like, hey man, we may be playing old North Dakota State. Second touchdown of the season and the return game for Jaden Price. This one from 81 yards out. And with five seconds to go in our first quarter, North Dakota State has turned the tables on USD so far in this quarterfinal. Yeah, so often you hear about out kicking your coverage. Well, what does that mean? It means kicking the ball so far that the return team doesn't have time to get close enough to the returner. And the returner has a great look at where the lanes are. He's able to make a couple of cuts is Jaden Price. There's some great blocking down the field. And then when it's one-on-one -on -one with the 
an offensive lineman or the punter. I mean, it is sayonara, see you later. I've got reservations for six. North Dakota State so far doing it on offense with a couple of big drives, a couple of touchdowns from each of their quarterbacks, now on special teams. And as I mentioned, tables have turned. You go back to the first meeting between these two, end of September, South Dakota that had the 21 to three lead at halftime. And the Bison wanting to start fast today. That's exactly what has occurred. Eli Osick back on the field to kick things away for NDSU. Jones back deep to receive. What an outburst between these two Missouri Valley Football Conference programs. And a touchback. I mean, at this point, if you're Bob Nielsen and the Coyotes, you're trying to catch your breath, regroup. You understand you have a lot of football left to be played, but you're already down 18. I mean, look, you, you have to simplify it to its basis. You, you, you had poor coverage on a punt. Okay, you chalk that up to we got to be better on special teams. Offensively, you've had two drives. One was a three and out, and one was a drive where you got down in the red zone. So offensively, you're okay. You just have to get back to what you were doing on that first drive. Defensively is where I think they're really scrambling to try and figure out what's going on. Five seconds to go in our first quarter. Tice the running back. And straight ahead, sent down quickly. Travis Tice Gain on the kill on first down, the final play. It's the end of the first quarter. Of our first Number quarter. 50, Cody, High, Cody Highsmith's on the tackle. Now the Bison present and accounted for thus far. Three touchdowns in our first quarter. It was Cam Miller, the honors first. And a host of others, including the punt return for a touchdown at Cole All right, Payton. fans, we Coverage have Trey on here ABC after representing this USD in, in our ABC stations. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Start of our second quarter back inside the Dakota Dome. 21 to 3, Bison. Dump off is there and a first down for the Coyotes as Charles Pierre Jr. scampers ahead to the 40. Already two points more scored by North Dakota State today than what they scored in the entire game. The first meeting between these two programs. Big plays everywhere, including Jaden Price, now a career record. Five punt returns for a touchdown in Fargo. And in that first game, they really had to grind it out. They had four drives that were over 10 plays. Two of those ended in field goals. Now they're able to get big plays for touchdowns. Pierre. Gain of one, and that's it. Oscar Benson led the charge that time for the Bison defense. And if you're on that Coyote sideline, you're just trying to settle down and have one good thing happen after another. You, you're, you can't take a, a, a bite that big enough out of this lead to do it in one drive. It's got to be drive after drive after drive where good thing happens after good things happen. So. Really, you just want to approach it the same way as you did coming into this game. Second and nine. Bauman flush, and now he's going to be sacked. Drilled back at the 29. Heisman applying the pressure with Darren. Watch right here. They're going to wrap around and then absolutely power through for Cody Heisman. I mean, he puts the guard on his rear end. Great power. And you got Aiden Bauman kind of banged up. He's going to have to come out for a play. Aiden Bauman needed a little assistance to get to his feet. We'll step aside here in Vermillion for an injury timeout. Center. Third and 17 coming up. 21 to 3. NDSU leading South Dakota. One more look at that last sequence. Javier Derrett, Cody Heisman combined for the sack of Bauman. Appropriately named, Cody Heisman gets in the backfield. Bauman banged up, so we're going to see Jared Sinek at quarterback position on this big third down. Transfer from Nebraska on third and long. Penalty marker comes in quickly. 
Sinek going to race. Needs a bunch, and he won't get there. Helicopter down. The football came out. And the recovery by Luke Wirtz, and a lot to unpack here after Benson forced the football out of the backup quarterback, Jared Sinek. And offensively, what a nightmare for South Dakota on the past two plays. Offside, number 54, defense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Jake Cava prevents the turnover, so that's costly. A new line for South Dakota. Right there at the end of the line of scrimmage, lined up a little bit off sides. And now, Aiden Bauman back in the game. And then on the back end, the fumble happened, but it gets wiped out. What a big alignment penalty by North Dakota State. And Benson forced that fumble. Instead of North Dakota State football, it's third down and 12. Bauman on the field, Roddy, you mentioned it. Ty somehow caught it right off the turf. Well short of the line again, just a two-yard pickup on third and 12. And another punt coming for the Coyotes. Well, as good as NDSU's defense has been and special teams has been. Just did he catch this? Uh, with the fingertips, like just barely above the turf. Not that it matters because he didn't get the line to game, but. Questions, do you try and punt away from Jaden Price? Price with five career punt returns for touchdowns. One today, two this season. We'll get the convoy this time and quickly bottled up. Send you to the studio. We got big news to talk about, Kevin Connors. I mean, what is that per at bat, Roddy Jones? You went to Georgia know. Tech. You're a much better mathematician than I am. A, a whole lot. Uh, honestly, it's the amount of money that makes you sound like an evil villain from Austin Powers. Seven hundred million dollars. Unbelievable. You now, big news in the world of sports. Still waiting on the call from that penalty marker. Here it comes. During the kick. Illegal block in the back, number 52, kicking team. 10-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. First down. Uh, talk about adding insult to injury. Already 21 to three, and a block in the back. It's gonna help the receiving team. Way away from the football. No reason for that to happen. But actually before that. Bob Nielsen wondering what's happening. Usually calm, cool, and collected. Not after this start today. On the road, the Bison have been dominant. And a handoff, Williams. Big gain on first down, Mogensen the stop after a pickup of eight yards. And right, it feels like Brock Mogensen, the Missouri Valley Football Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Either he or one of his teammates are going to have to step up, force a turnover, try to change momentum on some level here. And honestly, the, the turnover really feels like that's what needs to happen. They haven't been able to stop North Dakota State offensively. Even when they've gotten them in third and longs, the Bison have been able to convert. And now they're starting to get some momentum in the run game as well. Time for Miller looking long. He's going to throw one deep. Right in front of Caleb McKenzie and the Bison on the move again, and that'll be a gain of 48 more. The experienced go-to Eli Green against the redshirt freshman. It's just a big boy post. It's a runaway route. Speed against speed, and Green able to separate a perfect throw by Cam Miller. Remember, Caleb McKenzie replacing 
Shahid Barrows, who got injured last week in the game against Sacramento State. Four catches, 107 yards already for Eli Green. Lucky number 13. Pinu, legs churning over the left side, still on his feet. Brought down all the way at the 20. That's a gain of five, and Steve Hillis went on a bit of a ride there with Pinu. 210 pounds of him. Now you got a couple extra linemen coming in the game for North Dakota State. And they are gearing up to get big and go right at this South Dakota defense. It feels like they're trying to make a statement that the Bison of old are back. Hunter Pontius checks in. Last week's hero. Jake Rock as well. Jumbo formation. For Cam Miller. Penu again upended after a gain of four by Dennis Shorter. It'll be third and short. Roddy, you and I wondered this week in talking to both teams, one more look at that play. NDSU maybe found all of the mojo it needed with a blocked PAT. And it feels like the end of that game is carried over to the beginning of this one and then some. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, they were fortunate to win that game last week. The block PAT, certainly part of it, but they were negative in big plays, negative in turnovers. They got a big win. It's not negative today. Miller straight ahead. Needed a yard. Let's see where they mark it. Our vantage point, it looked like he had enough. And Keith Grace came in there for the tackle. And it is enough for a first down. That ends rolling. Approaching nine minutes to go in our first half. Here's Rajah Nelson with a path and a crease. Tumbling across the 10. Shorter the tackle, but a gain of seven more. The left side of that offensive line is just cooking. And they are creating holes consistently, whether it's zone scheme where no pullers. That one, you got a couple pullers coming around. Has not mattered. You got to feel like if you're South Dakota, I mean, you got to feel like everything's going against you as Cole Payton's back in the game. Carson Williams in motion. Peyton straight ahead, and a powerful finish will make it first and goal. If Peyton gets going, we've seen the speed. He's also got some power, 6'3", 230 pounds. Roddy, you like him as a tight end maybe in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, it's 6'3", 230 running the way he does with the passing skills not as polished as maybe they will be in the future. I mean, I think at the next level, you could very easily see him project as a tight end. Now, you don't know what his hands are like, but, but for a guy that operates that well in space. I mean, he has quite the future here, possibly at the quarterback position, but I think at the next level, it's almost shoe as a tight end. Yeah, just a sophomore. Marshall stopped dead in his tracks, second and goal. This could be the momentum builder for South Dakota on defense. If you're able to get a stop, keep it a three-score game, you're able to force a field goal here. Twenty-one to three, second and goal. Full house backfield, play action for Miller. End zone as a man, caught for the touchdown. Stuffle was there and he was wide open. Sixth touchdown of the season, this one from four yards out. It is all NDSU here in Vermillion. The Stuffle's going to line up right here. He's just running a corner, and this safety comes up to free up the route. So it ends up being Stuffle on a linebacker, Stephen Hillis, who's got no shot to cover the tight end. A good throw by Cam Miller. Another touchdown for the Bison. 81 yards in just nine plays. It has been the Cam Miller-Cole Payton show. And this time, a 
Wiley tight end wide open in the back of the end zone. It is 28 to 3 in DSU. ESPN is celebrating V Week, honoring the life and legacy of Jimmy Valvano while spotlighting cancer research. And today we want to honor North Dakota State true freshman Josiah Azure. He was the defensive player of the year for his high school team in Wisconsin and was diagnosed with stage three testicular cancer, missing the final three games of his senior season. After undergoing multiple surgeries and chemotherapy, Josiah finished out his school year, graduated, and was given the all clear to return to football where he is now a contributor on scout team as a tight end and a fullback. Josiah, watching from home, we send you a lot of love and prayers. Yes, indeed we do, Lauren. Well said. Each year during V-Week, we honor Jim Balvano by supporting the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Jimmy V's message of don't give up, don't ever give up, means more now than ever before. So we come together, the shared mission to accelerate victory over cancer and save lives. If you're able, please support the critical work of the V Foundation by visiting v.com slash donate and 100% of your donation goes directly to game-changing cancer research. Jones brings it back. Penalty marker on the field. During the return, holding number 16, return team, half the distance to the goal, first down. Ronnie, what do you do now? That's a great question. Bob Nielsen's trying to figure it out, too. You, you keep chipping away. It's the only thing you can do. So the hold happens right at the point of attack, driven down into the backfield. That's Keon Turner. At some point, you got to let go when you start to turn the guy and drive him in. But Roy, there's only one thing you can do, and it's try and put together a drive, try and get on the board. You get the ball first going into half. You can score here and get a stop. And maybe you're looking at a two score deficit going into halftime, but it is a monumental climb here against one of the premier institutions, premier programs in all of football, not just FCS football. You can feel the eye roll around the country seeing this score, knowing the Bison potentially trying to get back to their national championship ways this late hour in the FCS playoffs. Al Breath, the intended receiver, Kubit slammed that football out. Check out the ball control from North Dakota State. I mean, the 242 yards of offense so far in this game, it's approaching their total from the last time. They were not nearly as explosive as they were in the first half or really throughout the game so far. Bison have been dominant in this rivalry. That win by USD stopped a six-game winning streak for NDSU back on September 30th. Domination has returned so far today. Bauman buys some time and sails it high for Bell. Quickly, it's third and long. And the, the pressure on Bauman has, has been consistent all night. He kind of tripped over his own feet, too, as he was dropping back to pass. That ball was came out like a punt almost out of his hand. As he drops back to pass, his feet kind of get tangled up. And then there's someone right in his hip pocket. Another third and long. This is not what South Dakota is built for. One of four on third down so far. Bauman just five of 11 passing. Pressure has been a culprit there. He'll sense it, buy some time. Tice got to go. First down, USD. Big play there. We'll see if perhaps that's a spark at the end of the half for the Coyotes. Gain of 17. Well, they go to their captain on the offensive side of the ball, Travis Tice, on a little check down. This time, Bauman does a nice job of navigating in the pocket. One on one running back and linebacker, and Logan Cop can't keep up. Maybe that is the momentum builder. They need something offensively. Third catch for Tice for 34 yards. Three times on the ground as well so far for number five in red and white. Four men front. Play action, Bauman has a man, Corral, Phelps, into NDSU territory. His second big grab of the afternoon, and a gain of 27. This really had an opportunity to be a massive play, even bigger than it was. If Phelps is able to reel it in the first time, he kind of bobbles it against Sam Young, the safety. But if he's able to catch this cleanly, then it's a foot race up the field. 
And Sam Young, certainly a solid tackler, not the fleetest of foot at safety. South Dakota would have liked their chances in that one. Tice the running back. Jones in motion, play action again for Bauman. Off the wheel, Jones! Pinpoint precision on the pass. Jones right through the hands of Logan Kopp almost. Gain of eight. What a great catch and throw. I mean, the, the throw is right over the head, right over the helmet of the defender. And the true freshman, Keandre Jones, just goes up and snags it. On second down. Pierre needed two. He stopped just past the line again. That is a first down. Well, the San Diego, the South Dakota State rather story is an interesting one when you consider just three wins last season for Bob Nielsen. Starting to kind of find their rhythm on offense late with Aiden Bauman. Really lost no key players from that team a year ago to the portal. Simply wanting to move on. Everybody came back. And it's the greatest turnaround in the FCS this season. So it's a team that has faced adversity going back to last year and has risen from the ashes in 2023 to win 10 games. Most impressive win in school history. Intercepted off the carom. Wisniewski has it. Originally tipped by Luke Wirtz. NDSU forcing a turnover. The 19th interception of the season for this defense by far and away, Roddy, that leads the country. And that is what every South Dakota fan across the country is doing, grabbing their hair, asking if this could be any worse. There is a flag down, but it looked like it was after the interception on the return. Part of their pass, holding number 62 offense. A penalty's declined. The result of the play, interception, first down. Second pick of the season. Check that, the seventh pick of the season for Wisniewski. That's one way to do it for this powerful NDSU defense, Roddy. And NDSU has been all over. The pressure gets to Bauman. A tip pass, and Wisniewski, seven picks on the year. All buys him in this one. Well, you talk about Cole Wisniewski, seven interceptions on the season, but off the field, Roddy, he's the Missouri Valley Football Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year. First team, all league as well, of course, and uh, well, I tell you what, he can do so many things in so many different ways, shall we say. Yeah, he's minoring in professional selling. He needs to major in professional takeaways. He's been phenomenal. He's a guy that was a linebacker last year, transitioned to safety. You usually don't see guys move back in the defense, but he has done it and done it successfully. Yeah, second interception in as many weeks, seven on the year, tying that NDSU record, and the Bison pouring it on. Well, it felt like South Dakota had something cooking, and that's a first down run resulting in a first down. And NDSU just snatches momentum back right away. And it, I mean, it has been a dominant performance in every phase of the game. Williams a jump cut in the air. Sandwich for a gain of one. Boy, in, in the 10 wins that North Dakota State has this year, they forced 24 turnovers. In the three losses, not a single turnover forced for this defense. The rush numbers that they've been able to have in their wins significantly more than in their losses. That's the recipe for North Dakota State. They have followed that recipe to a T today. Cole Payton back on the field. Already has a 43-yard touchdown run earlier today. Can't get to the perimeter here and bottled up, driven out by Dennis Shorter. No gain on the play. No Shorter not intimidated. Called his name a couple of times so far in our first half, despite the lopsided score. He's been everywhere. Yeah, and, and now four for four on third down, third down for North Dakota State so far. Another third and long. They've been able to convert a, so far. You, you gotta wonder if you're Travis Johansson, the defensive coordinator for South Dakota, do you send pressure? 
because giving Cam Miller all the time in the world to throw has not worked out for the South Dakota defense. The officials pause the action for a moment. There's a football on the field, and South Dakota actually thought it was a timeout, so they kind of brought their their water bottles out, and the coaches started to come on the field, but just a little piece of equipment. It's not, it's not often you see that in a football game. Usually it's an it's, equipment it's, malfunction of some sort. Yeah, somebody with butterfingers on the sideline letting a football fall on the field. That happens in baseball a little bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Third and nine, less than two to go in our first half. Empty backfield for Miller. Grab the face mask, and everybody with a football pulse knows that's a 15-yard penalty on Mike Keith's grace and a first down coming for the Bison. Absolutely costly. Personal foul, face mask, number 90. Defense, 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Grace had the scoop and score last week, a different story with that sequence. Cam Miller was almost looking the other way through his helmet, looking through the ear hole. Do you remember the uh, worst face mask penalty ever called on you? Uh, yes, I do. My helmet got ripped off and I got hit after it. Broke it? my nose. That's pretty painful. That was pretty awful. Broke the nose. It did. Oh my gosh. It's still broken. Let it heal, but it is healed incorrectly. Makes my nose hurt right now. Yep. And I'm not you. Well, that's, I mean, you said costly. They finally covered everybody downfield and you get the face mask. 90 seconds remaining in the half. And Pinu racing ahead for a gain of a couple. It was Miller that kept it. I mean, honestly, if you're if you're Bob Nielsen, you start thinking about timeouts, you can sneak a touchdown potentially if you get a stop. It does not feel like, it doesn't look like at all that he's thinking about that. But, I mean, what do you have to lose? You're giving them more time to score. The thing is, you give yourself time if you do get the stop. I like where your mind is if you're a fan of the Coyotes. That certainly makes sense. Here's Miller. On the flats, Nelson. And tripped up short of the 20 by Jonas. Well, a four-yard gain. Clock continues to wind. Finally, a timeout call. We'll step aside in Vermillion. Bison on the move once again. See, we look forward to that back in the Dakota Dome. Rock Mogensen has been on the sideline on this drive. As Cole Payton checks back in for the Bison on third down. Mogensen, the MBFC player of the year on defense. And a big loss for the time being. Payton hands it off on the jet sweep. And needing four, Bison pick up five. It's Eli Green. Keeps the drive going. I'll help Trevor out for his halftime hit. How has North Dakota State done it in every way possible is the answer. I mean, it has been run game, pass game. They're perfect on third downs. Special teams, touchdown. I mean, it has been domination in any way you want it. Bison have one timeout to work with, leading 28 to 3. Peyton, the quarterback. The power run. Peyton tiptoeing the sidelines into the end zone. His second rushing touchdown of the game. This time from 17 yards out and a statement being made in our first half. By one of the top programs in FCS history. We well, get two pullers, but watch TK Marshall in the backfield and the lead block that he throws on the cornerback. It gets out in front, 
and it is a powerful finish by TK Marshall against Dennis Shorter, the safety. 35 to 3. Wow. Wow, that's right. Just a little pin and pull with a running back lead. You get an extra blocker out in front of the two pullers. That front side of the offensive line tries to pin everybody down so that you can get outside. North Dakota State loves this scheme. And Cole Payton able to get in the end zone. Well, I was right, partner. I mean, we were talking about this game, and, and South Dakota won the first game running 38 plays offensively. They averaged over seven yards per play, despite North Dakota State being six of 12 on third downs in that first game, two of two on fourth down. They were great in the red zone. South Dakota was defensively. Did not expect this. And uh, again, I think the fast start from Matt Entz and the Bison that doubt starts to creep in your mind if you're South Dakota because you are playing the powerhouse of FCS football. And I mean, it has looked like the powerhouse today. Our friends in Brookings would have something to say about that as defending champions. NDSU, since the block PAT a week ago against Montana State, has looked like a different team and a little chippiness here at the end of the half between these two rivals. Use the word statement on multiple occasions in this first half with good reason. When you see the score, you see how Bauman has been harassed so far. It has been a very impressive showing on all sides of the ball and special teams. Yeah, it certainly has. You know, it's interesting because you're right. South Dakota State, the win streak that they're on, defending national champions. I mean, they played North Dakota State in the championship game last year. It's sort of like the Alabama-Georgia debate that we had a couple years ago, where we didn't really pass the torch to Georgia until they won back-to-back. -back. So I think it's the same at this level as well. Alvin fires a pass. It's caught by Bell. 14 seconds to go, and now in NDSU territory, a gain of 16. Well, that's the one guy you got to find a way to get the football to in the second half to have a chance to Make this competitive late. I mean, they've tried. Remember the first drive? They had him on a corner route, not quite able to connect on it. Carter Bell was able to get his fingertips on it, but wasn't able to haul it in. Targeted six times already. Full complement of timeouts to work with. Across the middle, ripped away and intercepted. Wisniewski again. And a new school record with eight picks. Bauman trying to spot his tight end, Galbraith. And Wisniewski said, not tonight, again. And Aiden Bauman just doesn't look at the middle of the field to check where Wisniewski is. Assumes that it's going to be open and throws the ball. But the catch by Wisniewski is phenomenal. I mean, this is a hands snag. Bauman staring down the receiver, slings it. But Wisniewski goes outside the frame of his body, catches it with the hands, brings it down against the tight end. That's as impressive of an interception as you'll see. I mean, eight picks on the year. How about that? Most in program history. Three now in the last two playoff games for NDSU. The Bison fans have made the quick trip down here to Vermillion. Love what they see so far. 35 to three, the score at halftime. Impressive in every sense of the word. Coming up, it's the Halftime Report with Kevin Connors, Trevor Maddich, right after this quick break. Welcome back to the FCS quarterfinals on ABC. Look at the National Music Museum on campus here at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, South Dakota. The score tells the story at this point, 35 to three in DSU. Impressive in those first two quarters. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler back inside the Dakota Dome and for NDSU. I mean, pick your poison, offense, defense, special teams. They scored, they forced turnovers, they did everything right. They certainly did. It was a dream start early on. They wanted to start fast. They took the ball first. 
Uh, and they scored. They scored on every drive. They've been perfect on third down. And it started with Eli Green on a third and 19, three plays into the game, converted on a big pass. And it felt like, Roy, that was it for the South Dakota defense. That was their best shot. Uh, but you've had everybody get involved. Cole Payton's gotten in the end zone. You've had Cam Miller get in the end zone. They've done it on special teams as well. And then on the defensive side, it has been a dominant. Cole Wisniewski with two interceptions in that first half. They have kept the Coyotes out of the end zone. And now, if you are South Dakota, I mean, it's going to take a monumental effort. And it's going to start on this first drive. Coyotes do get the football to begin our second half as we check in with Lauren Sisler. Hey guys, talk to go both coaches going in and out of the locker room. And Coach Matt Enns, first and foremost, losing his voice. I said, why losing your voice? He said, because we're having fun. We're finally playing our football, what we've been working so hard for. He said, we're playing physical football. That's what we came here to do. And then on the other side of it, Coach Nielsen said, look, things didn't go our way. We've got to come out. We can't look back at the first half. We have to work hard and affect the game here in the second half, put points on the board, and control the football. Roddy, I saw Coach Ed smile at least twice in the first two quarters. I, you got to feel good for this kind of start against a team you lost to back on September 30th. Coyotes have the football to start. The handoff straight ahead to Pierre. All right, give me the recipe to where this game gets competitive. Obviously, they need to score. They need to score early, but what else are you looking for? Yeah, I, I think creating some explosive plays will help. Uh, getting this crowd, which was sold out to start, uh, it is significantly less than that now. Getting this crowd back involved, and more than that, just creating the confidence and belief. If you're going to come back in this game, it's going to start with believing that you can come back, and I'm not sure South Dakota believes. Majority of the roster back from last year's three-win team. They've overcome adversity in the past. Carter Bell catches one. There goes the leading receiver for USD, and Bell weaving his way ahead to the 31. Sam Young brought him down. It'll be first and 10 for the Coyotes after a gain of 41 yards, and Bellman slow to get up after that play. Carter Bell slow to get up on the back side, who comes off the field limping, but that'll do it. 41 yards, get a little movement in the pocket by Bauman. It's not great when your quarterback and your leading receiver are both a little gimpy, but hey, belief starts somewhere, and maybe it starts there. Loaded backfield, Pierre and Tice flanking Bauman. And Pierre down to the 30, and that's it. It's the tackle, gain of one. We were kind of playing the uh, the game of will they have enough possessions? Like, are there even enough possessions in this game for South Dakota to get back into it? And the answer is, I don't really know. I mean, this was a, a game with six possessions for each team total the first time they played. This one very different. But big plays are what South Dakota are going to have to have offensively so that you don't have these long drives. Can I try to answer the question? Sure. Maybe if you force two, three and outs, get you that extra possession or two you need to try to complete a comeback. Swing pass to Jones, has Jets. There they are, Jones. The scat back racing across the 25. Great block by Martins on the perimeter that time, Roddy. It's third down and short. Was a really nice block, a really nice job of getting to third and short. And this, you know, it's, it's way too early for, for South Dakota to be hyperspeed, but I heard them, I would operate with a little bit of tempo, a little bit of intensity offensively, a little bit of urgency to get in and out of the huddle. Play clock down to two. And the handoff to Pierre Jr. Wirtz stopped him. It'll be fourth down. Got to go, right? No field goal is going to help you here. Absolutely. You are absolutely going for it. Honestly, you are thinking about touchdowns and touchdown only. And honestly, you're probably going for it on every fourth down from here on if you're trying to win the football game. Yeah, analytics say you go for it if it's fourth and 13 or less. Nice job, analytics. USD 5 of 9 on fourth down this season. Less than a yard here. Pierre looking for a crease secondary effort, and he got there. Not a lot of room in the backfield, and Logan Cop 
probably missed a chance to stop this drive dead in its tracks. Phenomenal balance by Charles Pierre. Here's Logan Cop right in the middle of your screen. He comes downhill and it gets in the backfield, but Pierre with the great balance shakes off the arm tackle. It's 13 yards on just seven carries. Redshirt freshman from Orlando. And to the edge goes Tice. Jumps out of bounds with Jaden Price ushering him out after a game of about four. And look, this, this drive's already taken up five minutes of the third quarter, and you need five of them. I mean, that's 25 minutes of clock that you're taking up if every drive is like this. It, it just can't be. There's not enough time. And, and that was kind of my point with the urgency, getting in and out of the huddle. Now, if you get back in this game, maybe you ramp it up, but I, I think you got to start to do your work now if you're going to win this game. Montana awaits the winner of this game in the semis next week. Here's Bauman, backside pressure coming, the crossing route. Tipped it incomplete, Tice should have caught it, and instead, ordered with another interception in that NDSU secondary. It's, it's tough on the running back when the ball is kind of that high and outside and hot. If you're Bauman, you'd like to put it right on the body of the back. But a big third down, and again, you know, reiterate, they're going to go for every fourth down basically from here on. So you don't have to get it all here. You just want a positive play, and you want to avoid a sack. North Dakota State's gotten a ton of pressure on Aiden Bauman during this game. Third and seven. Bauman, quick release, end zone. Back corner. Caught for the touchdown by Phelps. So you're telling me there's a chance. Now the ball placement by Bauman. First touchdown of the game for the Coyotes. Not sure why the Coyotes aren't going for two here. Make it a. 24 point game. Theory, three touchdowns and three two point conversions could get you there. Instead, it's 35 to 10. Well, it's a great throw and catch. South Dakota with finally some offensive momentum. Aiden Bauman drops it in the bucket. Really nice body control by Javion Phelps. And hey, maybe there is a chance. Javion Phelps catches his second touchdown of the season, second in as many weeks. And South Dakota trying to be the hangaround team. 10.07 to go in our third quarter, 35 to 10 after a drive that took nearly five minutes off the clock. 75 yards in nine plays. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Lawrence Sisler. Now you got to find a way on defense to stand tall. But Roddy, you made a great point going out to break. Probably should have gone for two there because if you connect on the two-point play, three-possession game right now. It's the only way to get it to a three-possession game is to go for it and convert on that two-point conversion the first time. Otherwise, it's a it's a four-possession game still, no matter what. And what's the difference in this game if you're down 25 or you're down 26? I mean, nothing, essentially. So I'm a little confused as to why South Dakota didn't go for two, try and cut it to 24, which is three touchdowns, three two-point conversions to tie it up. Eli Green, the fair catch. The Bison today offensively have been downright lethal. How about touchdowns on all four first half touches and the punt return for a score too, by the way. That has to be, I mean, South Dakota's gonna have to have the complete opposite for this to be a game at all, but North Dakota State's been phenomenal offensively and they've done it in every way possible. Running with the running backs, quarterback run, big plays down the field, they've done it all. Grizz are watching. Certainly interested. Montana coming off the overtime win late last night. As Williams tumbles around the left side. Shoved out by Gaines after a gain of eight. Watch the puller on the left side. He comes around and gets a great seal on the edge. 
That's Jalen Sundell. Does a great job getting around and sealing that edge. Look, look, this North Dakota State offensive line has been tremendous. Their athleticism really stands out when you watch them and the amount and the effectiveness they have when they pull. TK Marshall, the running back. Stead Miller back to the air. And corralled by Henderson, his second catch for a first down. Braylon Henderson, that big play on third and long early. We were talking at halftime. That was one of the turning points early in this game, considering it felt like USC had all the momentum right out of the gate. A couple of big pass plays and early touchdown. It's been all NDSU. Cam Miller, you're eight of nine passing for a buck 60. You've scored two touchdowns, one through the air, one on the ground. Efficient day at the office. Yeah, I would say so. As efficient as they come. The formation, toss sweep, Marshall. Stop at the line, and we'll check in with Lauren. Yeah, guys, some questions about number 49 linebacker Brock Mogensen for South Dakota. He was seen uh, in the hallway in the first half of the football game later in that first half, and now he's on the sidelines, helmet off. It looks like he's got a back brace on. He's over here cheering. It does not appear that he will be going back into this football game. And we mentioned the Defensive Player of the Year in the MVFC. Over 100 tackles this season. A massive loss in this game, what could be the final game for Brock Mogensen as a coyote. And huge, and now number 41, Cannon Blauser comes in to replace him, a guy who came into this game with five tackles on the season. Second and 10. Coyote's gonna find a way to force a third and long here. And the true test of momentum arrives right now to start our second half. An early touchdown, now third down and nine. Can you get North Dakota State off the field on third down? The answer all game long, without exception has been no. Five third downs, five conversions. Now's your chance. They have opted mostly to give Cam Miller time. The last third down, they dropped eight and they actually covered well, but a face mask helped North Dakota State convert. Coyotes have to have it. Play clock down to one. Miller gets it cleanly. Short of the line to gain is Rashad Nelson, the tackle by Turner. It'll be fourth and short and decision time for the Bison. And it looks like they're leaving the offense on the field. I'm not surprised at all. You may see Cole Payton come into the game as well. You sure do. He's going to come in at quarterback. You're going to get some beef up front, and you're going to get some Cole Payton in the backfield. And it's, it is. Beef it up time if you're South Dakota. Bison have converted on their last seven fourth down conversions. Here comes the hammer. Peyton straight ahead, didn't need much. And he got more than enough. Four yard pickup, did the ball come out late? South Dakota is saying that it did. Dig through the pile, and that is a North Dakota State first down. Matt Ensign, right? Smile for a moment. I thought the football came out late here, Roddy. It's in the pile. It does look like it comes out. The question is, who recovers it? And if there's no clear recovery, it doesn't matter whether or not they ruled them down. It, it, there was no announcement, so don't... We don't know if he was ruled down by contact. Cole Payton got up with the football. So it's potential that they saw the fumble. They saw Cole Payton get up with it, and that was it. Williams gets tackled by Hillis on the ensuing play. No replay. And through that sequence, it was impossible to see what happened after the football was recovered. But Payton had it eventually. That's all that matters. Yeah, and how about Matt Inns deciding to go for it up 25, saying, hey, look, Let's put a nail in this thing, and they are absolutely doing it. Chewing time off the clock. Miller looking long. Awkward throw, nearly intercepted and poked out of bounds. It'll be third down. That near side coverage being applied by Miles Harden. Penalty marker comes in late as well. Holding, number 73, offense. 
10 yard penalty. Second down. Here's number 73, that's Mason Miller. Wraps around and gets called for the hold. Grabs that shoulder pad and... There have actually been multiple holds. There were, you had Miles Harden pulling the jersey off of number 19, Jake Lippy. That one not called, that's fine. Although, if you're a receiver and you're running downfield and you're an official, you see the flaps of the shoulder pad flopping out. It, I think you can safely assume that it was a hole. Across the middle, pass is caught. And a hard collision after the fact. Zach Mathis in that 6-7 frame breaking wide open across the middle. And a gain of 22. And a first down for the Bison. Another big play when they had to have it. And a good clean hit by Dennis Shorter on the back end. But it's a great job of working through traffic by Zach Mathis and bringing it in in traffic. They're going to take a look at this. I was, we didn't hear the announcement, but they're going to review it for targeting, I believe. We'll step aside. The lead at 25. Bison driving again after this. Live as in Urbis. 5.04 to go in our third quarter. South Dakota trying to find a way to get a stop. That booth review examining to see if that last play was targeting Roddy yeah I don't I don't think this is targeting it is forcible contact but the forcible contact comes to the chest the contact that happens in the head or neck area is kind of incidental it happens as a result but it's not forcible contact to the head or neck area it's not crown of the helmet I also have questions on whether or not there's an indicator whether that's a launch a lowering of the head or shoulder it's a hard hit but I don't think it's targeting because the forcible contact comes to the chest of the receiver and you have to confirm the review the on the field of a catch has been confirmed first down oh they weren't even talking about that they were talking about the catch we nailed the targeting though it was not targeting nor was it ever considered to be targeting we did realize that Mathis did have firm control yeah. of the football and that was a catch talking about the wrong thing more than half of NDSU's plays today have occurred in South Dakota territory. We spoke with Matt Entz at length this week. It felt like there was a quiet confidence of fire under the surface. That has transpired here today on the road in Vermillion. Penu straight ahead. A gain of a couple, give him three. And look, we kind of opened this half wondering if there were enough possessions for South Dakota to get back in the game. They had a five-minute drive offensively. Now North Dakota State has had nearly a six-minute drive so far in this one, and it's still going. The answer is an emphatic no, and, and that's kind of why I was imploring South Dakota, State, South Dakota to go fast, go for two. You have to have possessions. When you're not able to get off the field, that hurts. Play action, Miller. It's his fullback, Brozio. He'll rumble ahead inside the 25, shoved down by Dennis Shorter. It's a gain of eight more. It'll be third and short for the Bison. And this is textbook. You're trying to move the football. You're trying to possess the football. Third down and short has been no problem today for NDSU. And precious time continues to tick away off the clock. And, and look, you've got the Coyotes down 25. You're going for it on fourth down, in my opinion. Got an extra old lineman in the game. And, it's, look, and it's the other thing is South Dakota hasn't been able to stop these, these circumstances in this game. Pontius on the field, Jake Rock on the field. Third and two, Marshall picks up four. Clock not stopping on a third down. It continues to tick away in our third quarter. Only had two possessions in this quarter, yeah. reminiscent of the first meeting between these two teams. Yeah, I, we said it. You know, six possessions between the two teams. South Dakota had the ball in non-end-of-half scenarios five times. It is feeling very much like that. Twelfth play on this drive. Over seven minutes drained off the clock. Marshall, quarterback keeps it. 
And Miller stopped at the 16. You know, it's, it was really interesting because we asked head coach Matt Ince of the Bison, are there any guys up front that took it personal when you said that you were not the more physical team last week? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Really the whole offensive line. But Jake Kubis in particular, number 63, the right guard, took it extremely personally and was a big part of them having a great week of practice. Raja Nelson, two penalty markers come in. And a holding call likely coming for NDSU up front. Holding, number 74, offense. 10-yard penalty, so second down. Matt Hintz may be okay with that. Just back him up 10 yards, run it a couple of more times. More time comes off the clock. Honestly, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's number 74 in the middle of your screen, Gray Zabel. Who's called for the hold? But yeah, you're right. I mean, you get another down. I almost would have declined it if you're saying if you're if you're uh, South Dakota. I mean, just so that the next down happens. Now, depends on what the game was. I don't even. We were looking at the hold. It's going to be third and pretty short. Yeah. Second and sixteen makes sense. Does it? You need the ball. Ask me after this play. Pedu. He stopped. The twenty-three. Jonathan Jonas, numeral zero. Met him right there, brought him down in addition with Tim White. So a gain of just three in less than 90 seconds remaining here in our third quarter. Roddy, you pointed it out. This drive started, there was 10 minutes and change left in the quarter. Now we're approaching a minute to go. It's just like they went to the drive through to the doctor and said, hey, look, we are ordering a 10 plus minute drive. Or is it the doctor that orders those things? I can't remember. I thought you were going to say you ordered like 10 combo meals and it took forever for the restaurant to make them. Miller's going to buy some time and heave this one out of bounds. Now the pressure from Grace. And finally, it's fourth down and long for NDSU. Only the second incompletion of the day for Cam Miller and a wise decision. Going to force a field goal. and. North Dakota State with an opportunity to go up 28 in this game. Griffin Krosa from 40 yards out. He's made 17 consecutive field goals playing indoors. 15 of 18 on the year. Just inside the left hash. And a 40 yard attempt on the way. And it is good. Will the Bison respond after the first touchdown by South Dakota. 38 to 10, less than a minute to go. Fast moving, third quarter. If you're trying to win. Yes. 38 to 10, 50 seconds remaining in our third quarter. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. The bracket looks like this. The Grizz of Montana await the winner of this matchup. It'll be a home game next Saturday night, 4.30 on ESPN2. South Dakota State awaiting the winner as the number one seed between Idaho and Albany. That game later tonight, 10 Eastern on ESPN+. Jackrabbits, of course, the defending national champions. And a lot left to unfold as we get to the semifinals next week at this time. And for NDSU, 14th consecutive trip into the quarterfinals. And for head coach Matt Ench, it has gone exactly according to plan for Bob Nielsen. Not the kind of afternoon he anticipated here at home in Vermillion. Doesn't change what this South Dakota team has accomplished this year, but it is going to be quite the, quite the uneventful ending. Coyotes get it at the 25. Nate Bauman back on the field. He's just a sophomore. You think ahead towards next year. Maybe some key components returning for the Coyotes. There's also the whole idea of the transfer portal. A lot of times teams in the FBS watch games like this and kind of pick and choose maybe who they would be interested in talking to. Work to be done to make sure the roster stays intact. 
And at a program like this where you've won 10 games, the incredible turnaround culture has been constructed by Coach Nielsen and his staff. Advantage USD. Here's Tice. Patient run. He'll take a defender on a ride. And that was Darcy for a gain of nine. If you're Montana watching this game, thinking about the Bison next week, I mean, this grabs your attention in a hurry, does it not? I would say so, yeah. And look, they're going to turn on the film and see a team that was incredibly physical up front. I mean, Montana has had an excellent season, but anytime North Dakota State comes to town, your antenna are up. And, and you know, we've alluded to this a couple of times, but. North Dakota State, no matter how many losses are next to their name, we are still in an era where that is an intimidating brand rolling in. If they start to have success, it can really get in your head. 15 minutes to go in the Dakota Dome. 38 to 10, our score. Our coverage continues on ABC after this message and a word from our ABC station. Four finalists, one dream. And the winner is. Coming up later tonight, 8 Eastern on ESPN, the Heisman Trophy ceremony, where somebody will no doubt be thinking about that pose. The inside track, you have to think, Roddy. We saw Jaden Daniels three weeks ago at LSU. The number of touchdowns, the efficiency, no doubt he has the inside track this evening. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I think so. Uh, Vegas would agree, but Bo Nix was phenomenal in that championship game, and Michael Penix won the Maxwell Award yesterday. So, I, I look, it's going to be a heck of a race. I think it's Jane Daniels, but I'm not super confident. 15 minutes to go to start our fourth quarter. Bauman's going to be sacked. They were looking for the wheel route to Pierre, and instead, another tackle in the backfield. That'll bring up second down and long. Duton Hefner found a way for the second sack of the game for NDSU. Yeah, Jackson Duton Heffer is able to get through, just power his way through. They don't even turn back to block him. It's uh, gotten quite uh, lopsided. It's been quite lopsided, but the pressure has been incessant. Second and 18. Balvin pressured again. Throws that one up, caught, and that'll be a TFL. Pass wobbled for Tice. And Kubitz was able to crush him, and Bauman got crushed again as well. And that was Duton Hefner. Back-to-back -back plays getting to number two. Once again, and then. Jake Cava comes and cleans it up. Injury timeout. We will step aside in Vermillion. Aiden Bauman to his feet. Roddy, he's been smashed eight different times tonight. And with each one, starts to accumulate a little bit on the sophomore quarterback. And this is an artificial turf surface. It's 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 not like the old you know, carpet on concrete, but certainly any time you're getting pummeled as a quarterback, it doesn't matter if you're playing on pillows. Eventually, it's going to wear down on you. Jake Cava getting the job done today. An interior defensive line, most start Terrett finding ways to get to the quarterback. Now the second time we've seen Jarrett Sinek. Boys one deep and playing center field. Back there was Sam Young for the easy interception. And he stepped out of bounds on the return. Sam Young's just playing half the field. And it's such a long throw. The ball's going to hang up in the air forever when you've got a safety that's playing halves. It's just always going to be incredibly dangerous. Sinek, the Nebraska transfer, just throws it up for grabs, and it's about uh, 
about the easiest interception Sam Young is going to have. Third of the season for 35 in white. Miller back on the field. And now 21 picks. 18 coming into today. 21 now leads the planet in that department. And the handoff around the right side to Pinu. Sultz in a gain of a couple. Roddy, you can only imagine what it's going to sound and look like and feel like next week. Washington Grizzly Stadium. We saw what it was all about last night against Furman. Yeah. It required overtime. It was a raucous crowd. Snow was coming down. Quite the environment, quite the scene. Think about NDSU coming to town. Maybe on the back end of this dynasty run, but still alive and kicking. Thank you very much. It's going to be, for lack of a better word, a scene. Look, man, I, I am not ready to declare this dynasty over. I mean, if they're able to make a run and, w and, and win a national championship, uh, it may have had a slight hiccup, but it's still rolling. Now, the results during the season would suggest that maybe this team is going to have a tough time against South Dakota State. Those two teams played earlier this year. North Dakota State lost 33 to 16, turned the ball over three times. Cam Miller had two interceptions in the game. But hey, if they, they are playing better than they were then. And if they play mistake-free football, I mean, look, I don't know if you could count North Dakota State out. Or South Dakota State sure looks like a juggernaut. Nate Bauman on the phone upstairs. Miller across the middle. Eli Green, another grab in the first one of this fourth quarter. And for Green, his fifth catch. That one goes for nine yards and a first down right in front of Parker Fryer. I'm going to be honest. If, if you are watching this film in your, Mont uh, in your Montana or anybody else down the line, the thing that sort of startles you is, or maybe not startles you, but puts you on alert, is the way that the offensive and defensive lines have controlled this game. It looks like the physicality up front that North Dakota State really became known for over the last decade plus. Under 12 to play, Rajah Nelson to the edge. Cut it back inside and a smart move to keep the clock running, Lauren. Yeah, guys, a lot of injuries down here on the South Dakota sideline. An update, junior defensive tackle Nick Gaze. Uh, he got hurt against NDSU earlier in the season. He was excited for this football game. He went into the locker room, wasn't dressed in the second half. He's not out here on the sideline, so I imagine a disappointing end for his season, as well as Brock Mogensen. And then, of course, Aiden Bauman went back to the training room, was sitting there on the table in the back, looking with some frustration, some disappointment. He came back out, got on the phone for a moment, and then walked out and hugged his teammates, and he's here standing on the sidelines now watching. Yeah, we saw Tim White as well requiring attention moments ago. Penu straight ahead on second down. Blauser was there. He replaced Mogensen earlier in this game. Went out with an apparent back injury. It'll be third down. We got our research team on figuring out if 21 interceptions is the most in the world, as you asserted, and uh, turns out it is. Liberty also with 21 interceptions this year. So tied for the most on the planet. North Dakota State and Liberty. I love our research team. On third down, Miller. A couple of pats and a quick toss to his tight end. That'll be Williams. Right at the line to gain. It'll be fourth in about an inch and a half. Should remind people that, that North Dakota State looks like they're going to go for it again. Drake. 66 to 3. They were down in that game, weren't they? They were. Drake scored, got a field goal in the first drive of the game after a fumble in the first play of the game by Cam Miller. And then uh State scored the next 66. Miller straight ahead. A penalty marker comes in. Just think the scene in Missoula next week has a chance to be one of the all-time great moments this year in the FCS playoffs and, and beyond. Clifton McDowell with that touchdown strike late last night. Keelan White, the top half of OT. Furman turns it over on downs. Place goes Boncos. Comes the Offside. penalty. 
number 91 defense five yard penalty results in first down where did Webb that time trying to figure out if you can drive from Fargo to Missoula you can indeed you want to guess how far it is it's going to take at least 11 hours 14 hours go from Fargo to Missoula and I have a feeling there will be a lot of people making that drive next week you're right it's going to be a heck of a scene heard stories of how raucous it gets out there for the Grizz and the two teams from the Big Sky and Missouri Valley Conference that are excellent programs. Williams taking off towards the pylon, an easy touchdown. Now coming off a career high a week ago with 162 yards and two scores to Merrick Williams racing in from 19 yards out. And his first score of this game, 44 to 10. Word of caution as well to our friends at Montana. Make sure the ticket department, the athletic department, that password is is a little tougher to crack than simply playoffs. Password gate is my favorite thing of the college football season this year. And look, the, the people who cracked the code to get in the Dakota Dome have been treated to an absolute master class of a performance. Don't forget our next 30 for 30 film, the great Heisman race of 1997. Head your way tonight, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN. Right after this year's Heisman Trophy ceremony, takes an unprecedented look back at a race between Randy Moss, Ryan Leaf, Peyton Manning, and the eventual winner, Charles Woodson. Can't wait for it. Coming up 9 Eastern tonight on ESPN. Lauren? Take a look there, number 54 for North Dakota State University, Jake Cava, one of those guys always playing with a chip on his shoulder, and man, has he come on strong late in the season. Out to prove all of those who doubted that he could play football at this level wrong, and that was a big reason he decided to come back for a sixth season, under-recruited, underrated. He wanted to prove his value, and I'll tell you what, it showed up big time on the stat sheet here late in the season. I would say so, 35-point lead. Here's Jones. Roderick Jones, who did you think should have won the 1997 Heisman Trophy? Well, first off, on the Heisman race, it's a race unlike any other. You had four first-round picks, three future Hall of Famers, Charles Woodson, Randy Moss, Peyton Manning. Uh, and look, Peyton Manning got robbed. I'm going to say it. Peyton Manning got robbed, all because he couldn't beat Florida. I mean, come on. My man was tremendous that season. Randy Moss is the best player in the country, so he certainly should have been number two. Charles Woodson, great player, had a great year. But, uh, what happened then? He got robbed, man. He got robbed. I don't know. I have to watch the documentary to figure it out. Exactly. How did he win it? Sinek remains on the field as the quarterback. Carter Bell grabs it. He'll spin around to the 40. That's a first down, a gain of 13. I just remember the look on Peyton's face when it was announced that Woodson won it at the <laughs> ceremony. That's, that's probably a feeling. Didn't Randy Moss wear sunglasses? They kind of stuck with him. Yeah, probably. I don't remember that. I believe he did. He wore sunglasses. Some uh, sunglasses looked like he was fresh out of the Matrix. It would be, uh, be interesting. First down. North Dakota State jumped out to a 14-3 lead. That pass with tip from behind. That pressure coming in very strong for the Bison. Shaka Rokes getting some pressure. Stop me if you've heard this before. North Dakota State getting pressure on the South Dakota quarterback. But look, South Dakota has had a, had a tremendous season this year, Roy, and, and this, this result is going to sting, and it, it should sting. But you had a program that hosted its first ever playoff game in the Dakota Dome, a program that hosted its first ever quarterfinal in the Dakota Dome, a program that won three games a year ago, winning 10 this season. Little post corner, there it is to Martins in the NDSU territory. There's a lot to feel proud about. After a season like this, when you won three games last year, you've won 10 this year. It, it, ju it just stinks the way it ends. And, and look, there's no good way to end a season in the playoffs, unless 
you are hoisting the trophy at the end. And there's exactly one team that's going to be able to do that. So everyone has some level of disappointment. But Bob Nielsen has taken this program to heights that it hasn't seen at this level. We mentioned, too, his national championships at Minnesota Duluth. He knows what it takes to win a title and to win a national title. A step up, obviously, to the FCS. Cody Heinzman applying the pressure to Sinek, who has been under duress all seven snaps he's been on the field today. For Coach Nielsen, I think you see what happened here this afternoon. Go back to the drawing board. You try to retain as many of your players as you possibly can into 2024. We regroup and try to figure out, okay, how can we improve? Where do we get better? Yeah. Try to do this again next season. Is they're going to lose some really big pieces, particularly defensively. I mean, those linebackers, two sixth-year seniors and a seventh-year senior at that position alone. Tice, nifty move, strong finish. Stop at the line to gain by Benson. 10-yard pickup makes it a first down. It's a really good run by a running back, and, and Tice does this all the time. He's got great feet in the backfield, good patience, a good little jump cut, explosion through the hole. And when we talked to Josh Davis, the offensive coordinator yesterday, he was really, really effusive in his praise of Travis Tice, saying that I hope he decides to finish his career here because, you know, honestly, all coaches have to worry about where their guys are going to be the next year. It's a different era, college football. Senate going long and the pass incomplete. An interesting connection, Lauren, between Bob Nielsen and Matt Entz, right? Yeah, Bob Nielsen recruited Matt Entz to play for him at Wartburg College. And he told us that he knew early on Entz was going to be a career coach because of his work ethic. You know, he said sometimes you get in this thing, you see coaches or guys that want to be coaches, and you just, you know, right off the bat, either they're, they're cut out for it or they're not. And he knew right away because of his passion, his commitment to doing everything the right way. They do talk on the phone often, text throughout the week. Of course, this week, not the case, but it'll be interesting to see what that conversation is like after this one. Yeah, Coach Nielsen confirmed to us they actually talk at times they're not facing each other, maybe several times a week, or texts, or just stay in constant communication. That speaks volumes about their relationship. Right, I don't know how it works in coaching circles when you issue a beatdown like this with your one of your mentors, Matt Entz, doing that to uh, his good friend, Coach Bob Nielsen. But it certainly wouldn't mind being a fly on the wall of that conversation to hear how it all went down when it happened. To be honest, I don't think they would they would talk about this at all unless Matt Ince wants to offer, hey, look, here's the tells, here's the things that we saw to make you guys compromise. Sometimes amongst coaching friends, you do get that. But when you're in the same conference, I doubt that happens. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, the Missouri Valley Football Conference is hard enough. Cole Mintz brings down Nate Thomas. It'll be fourth down. You're going to see these guys next year in the regular season. You could see them again in the playoffs. You're really not going to try to divulge too much. Usually that stuff happens between coaches when you play non-conference games. You, you coach against one of your friends, you, you call them up after, and you say, hey man, help me out for the rest of this year. Because the next time you're gonna see that that coach or that, that friend, it'll likely be at a time where all that information is null and void. And going in the off season, they'll have enough time to self-scout anyway, but nothing but respect. Cynic on fourth down. Across the middle, Carter Bell. And that's enough to move the chains. Block continues to wide. Carter Bell, another catch, is fifth of this football game. You know, we were getting, we were getting uh, ready for this game, so we weren't able to, to watch. We were just keeping track of the score of the Villanova South Dakota State game. So I text our buddy Tom Lugabu, who did the game. Scouting report, quick scouting report on South Dakota State. How did you think they looked? They said the conditions were absolutely brutal, and they looked great. So if you're looking down the line, you're a North Dakota State fan. South Dakota State against in some really, really tough conditions. We were outside in those conditions just the, when the Brookings just up the road. It was windy, it was cold, it was snow this morning. It's tough. We walked about 300 feet from our car to a golf cart young Natalie who picked us up in that golf cart, a member of the USD Student Welcoming Committee, I believe. She brought us in here to the Dome and we thanked her for it, but just that brief walk, the conditions outside were brutal. And that's what the Jackrabbits had to contend with today. And 
They still look pretty good according to Luke, so that means something. A first and goal situation here. These playoffs generally have been, been so competitive, and we saw what Montana had to do against a really good Furman team led by Clay Hendricks, a team that scrapped and clawed, a team from South Carolina going to Missoula, Montana. They were going for two. They were going for the win late, and then a false start penalty yeah. forced him to kick the extra point and go to OT. I was curious what that play would have looked like. It looked like perhaps a running back pass. Second and goal coming up. Pass is incomplete to Galbraith. But that was it was a great game. Great game. And Montana's going to have some good mojo on its side playing at home. Washington Grizzly Stadium. The elements are going to be a factor with NDSU coming to town. It'll be a sellout. It'll be packed. Been told it's the most raucous environment in all of FCS. What you saying something? That's where Tom Luganville's career came to an end. Uh, that is true. That is a factual statement. The FCS legend. 349 to go. I'm gonna call him the ESPN legend. I refuse to do that. In his own mind, of course he is. Cynic backside pressure ball comes out. It was caught near the goal line. And that was Monroe that had to dive forward. And the ball's gonna be spotted inside the one. So not a touchdown for number 10. Just how they draw it up. Get it batted. That's a catch. Ball hits the ground. It does not look like it moves, so it doesn't aid in, in helping the receiver catch the football. And I think it's a good call spotting it just outside of the end zone. And the outcome of this one, not in doubt. Sugar huddle. And that'll prompt all kinds of activity. And a timeout. We'll step aside as well. 303 to go in Vermillion. <laughs> 45 to 10, 303 to go. Out of the timeout, third down and goal from inside the one. Roddy Jones, Roy Philpott, Oren Sisler. Cynic splits out. And Pierre will take the direct snap. To back him up five. What are going to call this one? False start, number 56, offense, five yard penalty, replay third down. Would be Bryce Henderson. Well, my question was that because there were about three guys on this on the uh, South Dakota offense that started moving, including the two in the backfield flanking the uh, Wildcat quarterback. So, sorry, Bryce Henderson. Your name and number is the one that gets called, but you weren't the only one, so you can feel good about it. 14th play, the drive upcoming, third and goal again. Coyotes with one touchdown in this second half. One of the game, looking for number two. And they will get it. Charles Pierre Jr. Redshirt freshman from Orlando. Touchdown number five this year. Second half look different for South Dakota. Obviously, the outcome probably decided at the break, but still, a couple of touchdowns, the offense operated a smoother level of efficiency. Yeah, unfortunately, the defense was, was kind of what it was the entire game. The North Dakota State offense has been phenomenal, but yeah, I mean, some positives out of the offense in the second half, for sure. It was a nice run by Charles Pierre. Let's take our final break. Charles Pierre Jr. with the touch for South Dakota, 45-17, 2.58 to go. Forty-five seventeen, back on campus in Vermilion. Chilly day outside, windy, snow flurries, what you would expect in early to mid-December. And North Dakota State reminding us that they haven't gone anywhere just yet. That last touchdown scored by number three on your screen, Charles Pierre Jr. A couple of scores in this second half to make the score more respectable. But it has been a dominating performance by the Bison with the date with the Grizzlies. Grizz of Montana next Saturday. 
number two national seed. This kickoff in no man's land quickly covered up by Mathis. So the bracket, go ahead and put NDSU right there above that line of number two seed Montana and South Dakota State, the defending national champions in primetime next Friday night, winning the winner of Idaho and Albany. The game will be played at 10 o'clock Eastern this evening on ESPN+. Plus. So three of the four are set with one more to go. All eyes on Frisco January 7th the national championship. Cole Payton back in at quarterback. Straight ahead, Penu. He'll keep it going all the way ahead to the 35. The NCAA FCS championship coverage continues next week with semifinal coverage on ESPN Networks. More information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You know, North Dakota State, with all the success that they've had, mentioned early in the broadcast, it's only their fifth true road game in the history of them being an FCS program. It's amazing. It is amazing. They're 51 games they play. Now, that excludes the national championship games that are played in Frisco, but also they're just going to be the sixth team to be unseated and make the semifinals. Only one of those teams have won their semifinal. It was Youngstown State going to Eastern Washington back in 2016. They eventually fell to James Madison in the national championship game. Now the game coming up next week. Montana 11 straight wins. Washington Grizzly Stadium. NDSU offensively we know is starting to really catch fire. 12th FCS appearance in the semifinals. And uh, the first meeting since way back in 2015 a game won by the Grizz, Roddy. Yeah. That game was in Missoula as well, as you can tell. Montana's hot, man. And winning a game like that, I mean, look at what it did to North Dakota State. North Dakota State goes to overtime last week. They went on a block extra point at the end of the game against Montana State. That game on the road, now they look to get the state championship of Montana by beating Montana on the way to Frisco. 4.30 Eastern, ESPN2 next week. Bison and Grizz. After this impressive performance, Logan Hofstedt, the injured NDSU player, he's quick to his feet. Will walk off tentatively under his own power, grasping that left arm to a certain extent. The senior from Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Bison put on a clinic today. It's a team that it lost to some 70 days ago, 24 to 19, at home no less. Turning the favor on the road. Gainus a hard hit against Kenu, Kenu rather. We're, Give him three, it'll be third down. We were discussing some of the, the losses that seem, that's South Dakota's gonna have in the offseason, that linebacking core. You look at a guy like Josiah Gaines, who's been such a big part of this crew, listed as a junior. But the question is, is a guy like Miles Harden, number one, who Shrine Bowl invite has eligibility eligibility left? Does he decide to come back? Does he test the waters in the NFL? Potential late round pick? Guys like that are the ones you need to hold on to. Penu, first down. That'll just about do it. A lot of talent on this South Dakota defense. Steve Hillis began his career at the Air Force. Realized he had diabetes, was discharged, walked on here in South Dakota. What a career he's had. And has turned out to be an all-conference player. Loganson as well, the Missouri Valley Football Conference Defensive Player of the Year this year. Tapping it up, rightfully so. Incredible career comes to a close. And it's part of the moments of a game like this where you got to win to keep playing, to keep your season alive. If you lose, it all comes to a screeching halt. NDSU scores on every meaningful offensive possession today. Exception of this last touch. Defense secured three more interceptions, 21 on this season. And good friends, Bob Nielsen, Matt Entz will meet at midfield. 
talk things over as South Dakota's incredible 10 win campaign comes to a close. It's, it's always a shame when it comes crashing down on South Dakota, but a tremendous season for them. Should be very proud of not only their season, but the overall attention they brought to Vermillion, South Dakota. The people of South Dakota have been tremendous, but North Dakota State really established themselves as a power in this playoffs. If you didn't think they were before, you have to think they are now. 45-17 the final. Lauren Sisler as Coach Ensign Campbeller. Hey, Coach, a big win today. This is a team that you lost to earlier in the season. What was the biggest difference for your football team to come out here and get this big win? I, I thought we handled the line of scrimmage a lot better than we did on September 30th. Uh, both our O-line and D-line, uh, we got pressure on the quarterback. We did a much better job defending third down than we did earlier. We, we just got, we just flat out played a bad half of football on September 30th and we couldn't do it again. All right, Coach, you're losing your voice a little bit. How special is this one to be able to come out here and do what you did to get back to the semifinals and prove people that you belong in this uh, every race? Every week is special. We got an unbelievable group of kids here. You know, this guy, Mr. Competitor right here, so I'm going to let you talk to him. He's way better looking than I am. All right, Cam, step on in here. All right, Cam, obviously a big win here on the road. You talked earlier this week, you wanted a shot at redemption. You wanted to prove to people that you belonged in the hunt for the national championship once again. How did you guys get it done in here today? You know, we had talked all week about proving ourselves right, you know, not really proving people wrong. We just wanted it for ourselves and this fan base. This was unbelievable today. Sold out crowd. We had so much fun. All right, you guys get ready for a hostile environment, going to Missoula, going to Montana. You guys have experienced that before. How excited are you to continue this run to a national title. We're going to enjoy this today and then we're going to look forward to it tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we played in four or five big venues, so shouldn't be anything new. We're really looking forward to it. And why is this season so special for you? I wouldn't say it's more special than any other years, but we just have a great group of seniors and we just don't want to be done yet. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, good luck. Enjoy this one. Thank you so much. Cam Miller, 13 of 15, passing 210 yards, a touchdown, and the bracket. One more time, the Grizz will get North Dakota State next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2. South Dakota State defending champions awaiting the winner of Idaho and Albany tonight on ESPN+. Plus. But yes, circle that one, mark your calendars now, and get ready for an incredible game between the Grizz and the Bison riding. Should be a phenomenal environment, should be a phenomenal game, and a semifinals with a lot of familiar faces. 416 total yards for the Bison, a punt return for a touchdown. And NDSU got it done in a major way, 45 to 17, our final score. For Lauren Sisler, Roddy Jones, I'm Roy Philpott, saying thank you for watching ESPN on ABC.